So good morning all. Today we are going to start with the peritoneum. What is peritoneum? But before we start with peritoneum, uh, I would first like you to have a general orientation of the disposition of the abdominal organs. Of course, you must have done in your previous two class quite a lot of it, but still, it is always better to be doing it again and again so that it just registers in your mind. Yeah. So we will first see the general disposition and then we will switch on to the peritoneum. Yeah, so you must have already been taught in the anterior abdominal wall or you can say anterior lateral abdominal wall that it is divided by the midclavicular lines and the transpalaric plane and the transtubercular plane into nine regions that is right hypochondrium, epigastrium, left hypochondrium, right lumbar region, umbilical region, left lumbar region, right iliac fossa region, hypogastrium, sorry, left iliac fossa region, hypogastrium and right iliac fossa region. Okay, so this was the skin of the anterior abdominal wall. Now then when you uh, just incise skin, then deep to it, we have seen this last time also, you have the superficial fascia, and deep to the superficial fascia, now you know that you have three abdominal muscles, which are external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis, right? Which are becoming aponeurotic anteriorly and forming the rectus sheath. Now, rectus sheath has been opened to show you that it contains anteriorly the anterior, uh, anteriorly the rectus abdominis. And you can see here the posterior part of the rectus sheath. Then we have done the skin, superficial fascia, the muscles of the uh, anterior, anterior abdominal wall, anterior lateral abdominal wall. And then this will be covered internally then by the extra peritoneal connective tissue. And finally, you have the peritoneal lining. Peritoneum is nothing but a mesothelial layer. It is a flat membranous like structure, right? So the peritoneum, which is lining the anterior abdominal wall as well as the posterior abdominal wall, that is, it is forming the parietal peritoneum. Whereas the peritoneum, which is covering the viscera of the abdominal cavity, they are that is known as the visceral peritoneum. So in this picture, we have exposed the abdominal cavity, and you are seeing that the anterior lateral abdominal wall is lined internally by parietal peritoneum. Okay. And then you see these organs. This is how you will see in the first and foremost uh, view when you are inciting the anterolateral abdominal wall. Okay, so you see partly the liver, then you have the stomach, and hanging from the stomach, the greater curvature of the stomach, you have this the four folds of peritoneum don't worry when we are doing peritoneum you will understand slowly and gradually what this is right so it is basically a thin membranous uh, partition right which is depending upon the amount of fat in it is it is thin and thick otherwise generally it is very thin it is covering it is covering like curtain Right, the curtain, the intestine, the, uh, the majority of the small intestine, partly the large intestine also, right? And this is known as the greater omentum. Right, so from this picture, you can appreciate that abdominal cavity is just not limited to the part inferior to the thoracic cage and above the pelvis but it is you know pushing inside so it is it is externally protected by thoracic cage 
we can see partly the liver is inside the thoracic cavity separated by diaphragm right similarly the upper part of the stomach is extending till the level of the thoracic cavity but separated by diaphragm so this diaphragm the tent shaped structure forms the upper part of the abdominal cavity it limits abdominal cavity to uh, from the thoracic cavity okay inferiorly the abdominal cavity is open and it communicates with the pelvic cavity there is no diaphragm as such separating the pelvic cavity from the abdominal cavity i'll go slowly and gradually so that it is uh, very simple for you to understand right and then now we have removed the greater omentum and we can now see the liver of course we could see last time also the liver the gall bladder the stomach and the ascend the cecum the appendix hanging down from there the uh, the ascending colon the transverse colon the descending colon and the pelvic colon or the sigmoid colon right sigmoid colon followed by the rectum and which is part of the uh, pelvic cavity prop okay so this is how you see the organs lying in the abdominal cavity right and now the importance of dividing these abdominal uh, the abdomen into regions right so you for example you have right hypochondrium you have epigastrium you have left hypochondrium so you can immediately say that liver is extending into right hypochondrium epigastrium left hypochondrium and the person whom you are talking to will immediately understand what you exactly mean from where this uh, structure is located okay similarly about the rest of the structures uh, present in the abdominal cavity right so we have seen the abdomen from the anterior aspect okay now once we remove all these structures we have talked of the liver stomach the large intestine the small intestine this is how you will see the posterior abdominal wall from its anterior side as if the cadaver is lying supine and you are peeping into the abdominal cavity from above so the cadaver is lying from the uh, uh, on its back okay so this is how you will see see liver has been removed so over here whatever peritoneal lining is left that is enclosing this particular area this is the bare area where the liver was present and so you can see all these retroperitoneal structure this is happening because of the reflection of peritoneum you can see all the organs lying on the posterior abdominal wall that is the kidneys the suprarenals okay the retroduodenal structure retroperitoneal structure the duodenum the pancreas the great vessels aorta over here then will be the inferior vena cava okay and uh, so on and so forth so once you remove these structures also then you come across the posterior abdominal wall muscles which will be dent uh, which you will be seeing in greater detail it is just to let you know the names of the muscles so in the posterior abdominal wall you have this muscle the psoas major next to that you have the muscle known as quadratus lumborum and then you have this muscle known as transversus abdominis why i have marked this structure so as minor in red because you occasionally see this muscle this was minor if it is present this is the location where they will be present so this is it about the abdominal wall and now we come on to peritoneum the topic of today right now peritoneum as i told you is a thin membranous i'll go a little slowly so that you can understand although it is a complex most complex structure largest sac like structure in the body 
but it I'll try to simplify it as much as possible so that you can understand okay now i'll tell you i'll be telling you everything in piecemeal but then when you're reading you can put everything together and then understand what is peritoneum right so peritoneum is nothing but a thin membrane which is formed of mesothelial cells and the connective tissue okay so those mesothelial cells are going to secrete serous fluid capillary thin fluid in the peritoneal cavity okay it's a sac like structure and then uh, peritoneal cavity is closed in males but it is open in females how it is open you have seen the uterus uh, vagina and the fallopian tube when you must have done the histology of it so through the lateral end of the fallopian tube it communicates uh, with the peritoneal cavity or you can say that it communicates with the exterior through the fallopian tube uterus vagina okay so now i'll demonstrate to you a little and then we'll proceed further suppose this is the sac like structure it is closed from above as well as from below okay now i have purposefully brought this you know something printed on it so that you can understand that these are two legs okay now so suppose suppose you are talking of the abdominal cavity my abdominal cavity okay so this peritoneal membrane will be lining the anterior abdominal wall anterior lateral abdominal wall and posterior abdominal wall okay so this is how it will be lining so this will be a sac like structure enclosing cavity inside that is the peritoneal cavity okay now i told you that peritoneal cavity is closed in case of males but it is open in females we will see how this happens remember we had talked of uh, abdominal wall being formed of skin the uh, the superficial fascia the muscles abdominal muscles and then the extra peritoneal connective tissue and the finally the peritoneum inside which is the peritoneal cavity now remember all the organs in the abdominal cavity they are developing outside the peritoneum i hope i have made my point clear suppose suppose liver this is my right side Okay, yeah. so suppose liver is developing on the right side, it is going to push the peritoneum, right? And it appears when you see it appears that liver is lying in the peritoneal cavity, but it is not. It is extra peritoneal. It is intra abdominal, but extra peritoneal. Okay. Yeah. Similarly, spleen. Spleen will be lined by the peritoneum, but it is extra peritoneum same is that with the uh, with the stomach with intestine everything okay so they are all developing outside the peritoneum now understand how the female pelvic cavity is communicating with the exterior i told you that in males in males this um, peritoneal cavity is a closed cavity all the organs are developing outside so for example anteriorly you will have the development of the urinary bladder duoda in males posteriorly you will have the development of the rectum that is also outside the peritoneum okay but in females between the urinary bladder and the rectum you have in between the uterus fallopian tube and vagina so you have fallopian tube then you have 
uterus and then followed by vagina. So you all know that vagina is communicating with the exterior. But how things are happening? Uh, that it is communicating with the peritoneal cavities, right? You have the vagina, then you have the uterus, followed by the fallopian tube. And developmentally, you see that you must have seen that fallopian tube, it uh, opens in the peritoneal cavity. Okay, so this is how it is communicating with the exterior. Right, so it is open in females and closed in males. Right, so this is how it is happening. See, all the organs are developing outside this purple colored peritoneal lining. So all of the structures are developing outside the peritoneal cavity. You can see this is the cut section, societal section of female pelvis. You can see the vagina, the uterus, and uterus is communicating with the fallopian tube. You can see on one side, fallopian tube, which is at its lateral end, opening in the peritoneal cavity. That is how it is going to take egg from the ovary, or ova from the ovary. Right, so what are the differences between the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum? See, the parietal peritoneum will be lining the body wall, whereas visceral peritoneum will be lining all the viscera, maybe completely or maybe a little, in, uh, uh, maybe a little. So that is visceral peritoneum. Then parietal peritoneum is developing from somatopleuric mesoderm and visceral peritoneum is developing from splanchnopleuric mesoderm. The nerve supply of parietal being somatic nerves and the nerve supply of this visceral being autonomic nerves. And as you see that it is supplied by somatic nerves, the parietal peritoneum, so it is pain sensitive. The other one will be pain insensitive and the blood supply of parietal peritoneum will be supplied by the uh, blood su uh, supply of the uh, body wall, whereas that of the visceral peritoneum will share its blood supply with the viscera. It is lying. Then, see, we will understand everything in piecemeal and then we'll put all the things together and see the vertical disposition of peritoneum and the transverse disposition of peritoneum. Okay, now this peritoneum, which we have talked of, it's a sac-like structure, but, but because of the complex development of the organs inside, how rotation is seen, taking place, which we did uh, in the last class on Saturday, how rotation is taking place and everything. So, so the entire peritoneal cavity will be greater sac barring, barring the part of the peritoneal cavity which is enclosed behind the stomach and from your last previous two classes you know that it is lesser sac. Okay. Now, so greater sac is every part of the peritoneal cavity barring the Part of the peritoneal cavity which is behind the stomach as well as the lesser omentum. Okay, now uh, we have done the disposition of the intestine. You see, this is ascending colon, transverse colon, and descending colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon. Now for descriptive purposes, we perform part of the peritoneal cavity above the transverse colon that is supracolic compartment and the part below the transverse colon that is infracolic compartment. 
right? And since we have marked this, I'll just tell you that the greater cavity is communicating with the lesser sac, which is behind this lesser omentum through this right free margin of lesser omentum, which is forming a boundary of a foramen with known as epiploic foramen. So you can say that the greater sac is communicating with the lesser sac through epiploic foramen. Now, the same thing uh, in a sagittal section, you can see the liver, stomach, transverse colon and coils of small intestine. So if you pass a transverse line above that, you will have the supracolic compartment. Below that, you will have intracolic compartment. This is just for the sake of description. Okay. And then, mind you, we have talked of peritoneal cavity, a sac-like structure, but when you open and see, everything is filled up with the organs, right? So you have minimal space, capillary thin space in the abdomen, peritoneal cavity, right? Everything you have enlarged organs present in it. So you can see majority of the peritoneal cavity is greater sac. It is only part which is lying behind the stomach and the lesser omentum is the lesser sac. Right, so now you understand that, again taking the example of this, so this, uh, this written part is lining the anterior abdominal wall and the plain part is lining the posterior abdominal wall, right? So, you all know that liver is on the right side. So, developmentally what happens, from the umbilicus to the liver passes a vein known as left umbilical vein, right? Left umbilical vein, that left umbilical vein will be, will be, Raising a fold of peritoneum. Going to the liver, raising a fold of peritoneum, which is known as, so fold of peritoneum meaning it will have double length. Double length. Okay. One left layer and one right layer. One right layer and one left layer. Okay. So this left umbilical vein which in adults is forming the ligamentum teres or the round ligament right so this is ligamentum teres which is going to the liver it is present between the two folds of the peritoneum which is known as falciform ligament we have seen that it is developing from ventral mesogastrium I repeat, the lower free margin of the falciform ligament inside will carry the obliterated left umbilical vein, which is now known as ligamentum teres. Okay, ligamentum teres hepatis, just to differentiate it from the ligamentum teres going to the head of the femur. Okay, so this you can see the double fold of the peritoneum. The peritoneum is lining the inside inner aspect of the anterior abdominal wall. So this uh, ligamentum teres is raising these two folds of peritoneum. One uh, is the left layer, the one is the left layer, the other one is the right layer. I think this should be the right side and this will be the left side anyway. So uh, just to say that it is uh, composed of two layers, the left layer and the right layer, right? Now, so as it goes to the liver, as it goes to the liver, see this left umbilical vein will be going to the liver, inferior aspect of the liver and will be connected 
to the inferior vena cava through ductus venosus. We will see that gradually. Okay. We just leave it here. Then we see that the falciform ligament, which is nothing but double fold of peritoneum, has got two layers, a left layer and a right layer. Both of them, as they reach the liver, this is the anterior aspect of the liver and this is the superior aspect of the liver. Right? This falciform ligament will be dividing the liver into right lobe and a left lobe. Right? It is forming a partition between two. Now, the left layer of the peritoneum, it sprays, splays, or you can say spreads around the left lobe, and the right layer spreads about, around the right lobe of the liver. Right, now you can see this falciform ligament having two layers, a left and a right layer. The left layer going to the anterior surface of the liver, the right layer going to the uh, anterior surface of the right lobe of the liver. Okay, and as it is going above, it is covering the liver entirely, the layers, they are covering the liver entirely, and then from its superior aspect, it is getting reflected onto the diaphragm. It is getting reflected onto the diaphragm, uh, you can see here also, here also it is getting reflected onto the diaphragm. So it is forming a structure known as coronary ligament, the superior layer of the coronary ligament. Similarly, here it is reflecting and the lateral fold of the ligament which it is forming is known as the left triangular ligament. So this is although they are marking coronary ligament here also no not it is not wrong but generally you say this is anterior layer of the left triangular ligament okay and similarly over here you say that this is the superior layer of the coronary ligament on the right side all right and as it goes laterally, laterally it forms a fold. Uh, laterally it will form a fold. You can see here from this picture it is more clear. Uh, this is falciform ligament, anterior superior aspect of the liver. This is the left lobe, the right lobe. You can see how the peritoneum is spreading around. How the peritoneum is spreading around and forming the anterior layer of the triangular ligament, left triangular ligament, and then posteriorly, of course, the peritoneum is going to cover the inferior aspect also and come onto the posterior side. It is the same layer, you know, it is complexly folding. So it is forming posteriorly, the posterior layer of the triangular ligament. And laterally, or you can say laterally, or in this case, you can say medially, when it is going to the left side these two layers they fold and they form the left triangular ligament similarly similarly on the right side you see that it is forming the superior layer of the coronary ligament and posteriorly it will form the inferior layer of the coronary ligament which join on the right side to form the right triangular ligament. Okay, and the space enclosed between these two layers of the peritoneum, a part of the liver which is not lined by the peritoneum, will be the bare area of the liver. So you have many bare areas on the liver. You will be told when you're doing class on the liver, but this one is the triangular shaped is the bare the bare area of the liver right so if you can see the boundaries anteriorly you have the superior layer of the coronary ligament posteriorly you will have the inferior layer of the coronary ligament and its apex at its apex 
you have the right triangular ligament and it is paved for the base of this will be formed by this vessel great vessel the inferior vena cava so groove for the inferior vena cava right now you can see here that this peritoneum is lining the anterior abdominal wall from its inner aspect this being the right and this being the left side right now as it is lining the inner aspect of the liver see whatever structures are between the uh, perito uh, uh, the and the inner aspect of the anterior abdominal wall see whatever structures are between the peritoneum and the muscles uh, or the connective tissue of the anterior abdominal wall will raise a fold of peritoneum so in the lower part you have three folds of the peritoneum raised because of see in the pelvic cavity this is the urinary bladder so attached to the apex of the urinary bladder is uracus but in adults it is forming the median umbilical ligament the obliterated part of the uracus is known as the median umbilical ligament and lateral to that this fold is being raised by the umbilical artery on the right side the right umbilical artery on the left side the left umbilical artery but obliterated umbilical artery so obliterated umbilical arteries are forming the medial ial mind you not median okay medial umbilical ligament now still lateral to that you have this the lateral umbilical fold which is raised by this structure the inferior epigastric vessels right so in this view you can easily see the median umbilical fold the medial umbilical fold and the lateral umbilical fold inferiorly there is just a space enclosed between these two and or a depression you can see between uh, these structures the uh, depression between the medial umbilical uh, median umbilical fold and medial umbilical fold is supra vesical fossa the depression between the medial umbilical fold and the lateral umbilical fold is the medial inguinal fossa and the the depression lateral to the lateral umbilical fold is known as the lateral inguinal fossa right so we see that from the liver this is the inferior aspect of the liver where you can see this gall bladder this line it is just peeping through the inferior margin of the liver just this much part of the gall bladder is peeping up. okay so from the inferior aspect of the liver to the esophagus abdominal esophagus the right side of the abdominal esophagus the lesser curvature and the first part of the duodenum this this double fold of peritoneum is known as the lesser omentum derived from the ventral mesogastrium or ventral mesentery okay similarly fold of peritoneum which is hanging from the greater curvature of the stomach is known as the greater omentum developing from dorsal mesentery or dorsal mesogastric okay so let us switch on to the lesser omentum now what is lesser omentum see it is extending all of you know now it is extending from the inferior aspect of the liver to the stomach but its lesser curvature now exactly we just cannot do with this much only we have to know the exact 
attachments of lesser momentum. For that, we will see this picture of the inferior aspect of the liver that is also known as the visceral surface of the liver because most uh, all of the viscera are located uh, uh, kind of forming depression on the inferior aspect of the liver so that is known as visceral surface of the liver okay now the falciform ligament i told you is dividing the liver into right lobe and a left lobe right and you also can see that the uh, uh, the uh, the, in the falciform ligament which is carrying the left umbilical vein is connecting the uh, to the inferior vena cava by this structure which will be present over here the ductus venosus right so later it will form in adult life the ligamentum venosum so this area is nothing but fissure for ligamentum venosum right so you can say that the folds of peritoneum are attached to the fissure for ligamentum venosum and this structure which is known the margins of the structure which is known as porta hepatis right what includes in the porta hepatis you uh, you have the hepatic artery you have the bile duct and the portal vein commonly these three structures form the porta hepatis the gateway of these for these structures and of course this attachment will be inverted l shape so superiorly you have inverted l shaped attachment of the lesser momentum how about inferiorly inferiorly you can say that it is attached to the right side of the abdominal esophagus the lesser curvature and the first part of the duodenum so these are the attachments of the lesser omentum superiorly and inferiorly and it is communicating with the general uh, peritoneal cavity that is greater sac through this foramen which is epicloic foramen so if you pass a finger i'll show you in some slides where a finger is passing so you can easily understand right so this is what is the lesser omentum the part which is extending from the liver to the stomach is known as gastro hepatic ligament and the part which is extending from the liver to the duodenum is known as hepato duodenal ligament right and this is the free margin of the lesser omentum which is containing the bile duct the hepatic artery and in posterior plane if you can see this is the portal vein bile duct is on the right side the hepatic artery is on the left side and portal vein is behind how will you remember the structure very important relation how will you remember this relation see you must have read the dextro rotatory and levo rotatory in case so in your chemistry classes so dextro rotatory Uh, the rotation of the right, light polarized light towards the uh, right side so d for dextro rotatory d for duct so bile duct is always on the right side right so the free margin of the, the this is a common question asked right what are the contents of the right free margin of the lesser of nothing but the bile duct hepatic artery and portal vein and now you know how uh, uh, what are the relations of these huh? and you can also see from this picture that how it is communicating posterior uh, to this right free margin it is communicating with the lesser sac right and this is this this gap is known as the epiploic for so you can always say that this is the anterior boundary of the epiploic foramen containing these structures bile duct hepatic artery and portal vein 
what are the contents of lesser romantum the contents of the lesser romantum you will have the gastric vessels on the left side the left gastric on the right side the right gastric vessels gastric roots right uh, then you have the free margin containing the bile duct containing the bile duct hepatic artery and portal vein then you have autonomic nerves fat connected tissue lymphatics and lymph see everywhere you can add this the autonomic nerves fat connected tissue lymphatic lymph nodes it is these structures you have to remember our contents of lesser omentum is also important then this is how you can see that this finger is passing behind this anterior margin of the foramen which is known as epicloic foramen this is also known as foramen of winslow now this is also asked what are the boundaries of epicloic foramen see the uh, anterior boundary you can easily understand it is the right free margin of the lesser omentum containing the bile duct hepatic artery and portal vein if you pass your finger inferiorly you touch the first part of the duodenum so inferior boundary is the first part of the duodenum posteriorly if you touch then you will have the presence of inferior vena cava and superiorly if you touch this finger superiorly the part of the liver in relation to over here is the caudate process of the liver i'll just show you a little bit how you can understand right from this picture i think you can understand see the porta hepatis this is forming the anterior boundary of the epicloic foramen this inferior vena cava is forming the posterior boundary and what is superior boundary here it is nothing but the caudate process mind you never say caudate lobe this is the caudate lobe but this thin part between the inferior vena cava and the portal vein this thin part or strip of the liver is known as caudate process of the liver right so through the epicloic foramen we are entering into a cavity behind the lesser omentum and the stomach the posterior surface of the stomach and that is known as the lesser sac or the omental bursa lesser sac is also very important right so you can see that the finger has passed through epicloic foramen into this cavity on the left side that is behind the stomach so that you have elevated the stomach so this is the posterior aspect of the stomach and this is so this posterior aspect of the stomach is going to form the anterior boundary whereas opposite to that you have this wall this is the posterior wall of the lesser sac or you can also say the structures forming the stomach bed but they will be lined by peritoneum okay so these are the structures the pancreas the transverse mesocolon variably you have the presence of the transverse colon because transverse mesocolon is attached to this so transverse colon will be a mobile structure okay and apart from that on the left kidney and the suprarenal part or on the of the left side right apart from that you have this vessel arising here the celiac trunk celiac trunk giving its branches immediately okay which you are going to learn and this is the crux of the diaphragm the left crux of the diaphragm okay so all these structures covered by peritoneum will form the posterior wall of the lesser sac what are the exact boundaries of the lesser sac we just see from the sagittal section see for that i'll trace a the peritoneum a letter i told you that this peritoneum is reflected onto the liver see it is basically it's the same thing but same membrane but it is how you explain it from which end to which so over here 
in this section, you can see that it is the peritoneum which is lining the interior abdominal wall. Then it is getting reflected onto the liver, this layer. Since we are talking on the left side, it will be anterior layer of the left triangular ligament. Then it is covering the liver and it is going to the fissure for ligamentum venosum. From, it is lining here and then it is reflecting downwards. Okay. Then it is reflecting downwards to form the anterior wall of the lesser mentum. Okay. Which is then going on the anterior superior aspect of the liver of the stomach. Which is then hanging downwards and forming the anterior layer of the greater omentum. The, see the other fold of the peritoneum. You just trace from here. This peritoneum is getting reflected, lining the diaphragm, getting reflected as the posterior layer of the left triangular ligament, and then it is lining the liver. It is going towards the fissure for ligamentum venosum, and then it is. Uh, and then it is it is reflecting downwards to form the posterior layer of the lesser omentum. So you can see that lesser omentum has got two layers. But if you take a section at this layer, at this level, then you have four layers of the peritoneum in fissure for ligamentum venosum. Right, and then if you trace this layer, posterior layer, posterior layer is covering the posterior part of the <coughs> stomach, and then it is hanging down to form the to form the second layer of the uh, greater omentum. So anterior uh, anterior uh, peritoneum, which was covering the stomach anteriorly, is forming the first layer. The stomach, uh, the peritoneum, which is lining the posterior aspect of the stomach is the second layer of the peritoneum. It goes inferiorly and then reflects on itself. It reflects on itself such that the second layer has formed the third layer of peritoneum and the third, the first layer has formed the fourth layer of the peritoneum. So we, if we take a section from this level, we can say that greater omenta consists of four folds of peritoneum or if you get confused by folds, it is four layers of the peritoneum. Yeah, it is a thin membranous structure, but, but depending on the deposition of fat because you know fat can accumulate in the greater omenta. So depending on that, you have variable thickness of the greater omenta. Right, so you can trace from here the, the, the third layer is going anterior superior to the transverse colon. It is just going to the posterior abdominal wall structures and then getting back reflected and forming the same thing. So as a result, it is enclosing the lesser sac. Now, so if we have to see the boundaries of the lesser sac, then you can say that the anterior wall of the lesser sac is formed by posterior layer of the lesser omentum, right? Then the posterior surface of the stomach and the anterior two layers of the greater omentum. Okay, so this will form the anterior wall of the lesser sac. Similarly, if we want to form the posterior wall of the lesser sac, we will say that parietal peritoneum, which is covering the structures of the stomach bed, right, and also it is the posterior two layers of the greater omentum. So this is the posterior wall of the uh, lesser sac. 
which is nothing but if you have a peritoneum covering all these structures we have seen the structures covering the the peritoneum covering the structures of the stomach bed so stomach bed is also very important the people are asked what are draw the structures in the stomach bed okay what is the left lining or left margin of the 